Welcome to the Love Works Podcast. My name is Chris Duncan, and this is my beautiful wife, Jennifer Duncan, and we are so honored you've chosen to be with us today. Since this is our first episode, we'd like to provide you with some background on us and our family, and also why we decided to do the Love Works Podcast. So, a little bit of background Jennifer and I have been married for 21 years. We have six children, yes, six children Boston, age 16, Grayson, age 13. Harper, age six, Rowan, age six, Quinn, age six. Yes, before you hit pause or or go back, you heard me right. I did say three separate girls, age six. We are additionally blessed to be the parents of three beautiful six-year-old triplet girls. And rounding out the bunch is our little bundle of joy, Asher, age one. Over the past eight years, we've also had the privilege to be foster parents to three additional children. So as previously mentioned, we've been married 21 years, six kids, foster parents. Uh, two of the six have clinically died. They've For minutes, we've been in the hospital and we've been through some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we've lived life. Uh, to the fullest these past uh, 21 years. So we have some real world insight into marriage, into parenting. We're not like those experts that write a book and have never been married. I love that they write a book on marriage and they've never actually been married or write a book on parenting and don't have kids. You can't be an expert of something you've never done. I'm sorry, you just can't. (laughs) So not to say we are experts, but hey, we might be. <laughs> so over these past 21 years, not only six kids, foster parenting, but we've had the added blessing of being in ministry together. We've held numerous uh, roles or titles. We've worked in Sunday school, uh, kids' church, uh, kids' zone, nights of rushing wind. We've Princess Protection, we've done a lot of that, uh, singles, uh, young marrieds, and we currently serve as the assistant pastor at our local church here, Rushing Wind, the greatest church on earth, under senior pastor Sean Manzano. And part of our uh, duties uh, that we have, I don't want duties, I don't know if that's the right word, <laughs> that sounds so formal, uh, but part of what we get to do, some of the blessings things that we get to do in ministry is um, we help with a premarital counseling. We are Symbus certified facilitators and we help with the premarital counseling. We help with uh, marriage coaching um, along with the various other things that we do in our ministry there at Rushing Wind. So uh, we, I feel we have a lot of uh, life experience, a lot of real world experience. In addition to all of that kind of hands-on experience that we have, um, we've read many parenting books. At least I've read many parenting books. Jen is a natural. I've read many parenting (laughs) books, uh, marriage books. I listen to other podcasts on the topics. Um, Jen is uh, many, many years uh, aficionado aficionado of Dr. Laura. (laughs) So uh, just with all of that, we really feel that we have something to say on these topics. And so we're we're just excited that uh, you've chosen to be with us. So our why, why, why are we doing this? Why do you, why are we doing this, Jen? Well, recently uh, in our role as marriage coaches and um, doing some of the premarital counseling, we've seen a need for, um, especially our young marrieds, um, at just having some real world advice and, and seeing some, uh, biblical examples of, of families and parenting and, um, love and marriage and all these things. And we just wanted to make sure that we were, uh, providing them with something, um, on a bigger scale because it's hard to be able to have enough time to sit down with each and every person and share things with them. So we wanted to 
find a way that we could share things with these young couples and even some of our uh, older couples that maybe could help them. And, you know, along with uh, Chris was talking about all of our, you know, qualifications or whatever. (laughs) Um, I think a lot of them are trial and error over 21 years and, uh, you know, all the things that we've been through and done. uh, Sometimes you learn some things by doing them the wrong way. And uh, we hope to make sure that we can help others, whether it's somehow we, we were able to do it the right way or we learned from doing it the wrong way. We want to help them so they don't have to do things. Um, Sorry, I'm waving my hands at Jen because she keeps like rattling the cord and I can hear it. So that's why she stopped talking. It's driving me crazy. It's just, all she's. Uh, we'll just say this right now. She's a perfectionist. It's all wrinkles. She's trying to straighten out a cord. That, I'm sorry. I'm yes. Sorry. It's okay. Okay. But anyway, that's why we're doing it. We want to give some advice. We want to help others um, to have the uh, amazing marriage, the the family, to have the uh, tools that they need to get them through the day and, and to have the most fulfilling family and marriage that they can. So good. And, and, My why, why are we doing this? Because we're the best. This is going to be the best podcast. I'm just kidding. (laughs) No, um, we've actually felt, or I have felt like we should do a podcast for a long time. However, I am the person in the marriage that I think of something and I'm like, let's go, let's do it, boom. And I start diving in. I don't fully think about everything. <laughs> Jen fully thinks about everything. So uh, it was no for a while, but uh, I'm going to get a little spiritual for just a moment because part of it is, right, we're going to talk about faith. Um, about a month or two ago, Uh, I was getting ready for church one morning. I was thinking about some of our young couples. I really felt uh, a burden for them, ironing my clothes, praying for them. And I felt like God told me, it's time to do a podcast. And immediately, Love Works came into my mind. And I thought, that's going to be our podcast. That's going to be the the name of our podcast. And I put in my phone, and it was like 8. 25 or something like that in the morning. Didn't say anything to Jen because if you're in our house on Sunday morning with six kids, two adults, <laughs> three dogs, a partridge in a pear tree, a lot is happening. And so it's just chaos. Uh, so we, we go to church. We're having an amazing service. The Lord is moving. And I look over and I see Jen. We lock eyes and I walk over to her. And I said, man, I just have such a a burden for our young marrieds. And Jen looks at me and says, we need to do a podcast. And I, no way. I'm like, I felt God told me the same thing. So that's really our why, why we're doing it now, because I I think it's time. And so we're going to have a blast doing this. So when are we going to be releasing our episodes? They're going to be every other week, bi-weekly. They should be released on Thursdays. So we're recording now. I'll get to editing. And then so by the first Thursday in October, our first one will be released. And then uh, bi-weekly after that. In this podcast, we'll be addressing topics that pertain to marriage, family, and faith. What do we mean by faith? Well, as Christians, we always strive to have our outlook, our opinions, and really everything in our lives directed by the Word of God. If you have any questions for us or topics you want us to discuss, there are a number of ways you can reach out. And remember, everything's always uh, anonymous. We'll never tell uh, or uh, give out any names of, of where we're getting these from. Unless it's really terrible, then I'm, I'm absolutely <laughs> going to use your name. Just kidding. I won't let him, I promise. Uh, The first way you can reach out to us, probably the easiest, is text. Text your questions or topics to 747-322-1089. 
You can also call and leave a voicemail at that number. Again, it's 747-322-1089. And you can email us at loveworkspodcast at gmail.com. Awesome. So those are the three ways that you can get a hold of us. Um, and at some point, I'm sure we'll have some type of social media footprint, um, Instagram or whatever the, the cool kids are on nowadays. <laughs> MySpace, I think. Oh, we won't be on it if the yeah. Kids are on there. <laughs> Never mind, we won't be on it. <laughs> We're not cool. So, our first episode. What are we going to talk about? We're going to dive into the deep end today. Our show today is going to be, what is love? What is love? And I'll be referencing um, some topics, some things out of the Simbus book uh, that we read uh, as we were. Uh, training and and getting ready to become uh, certified facilitators. So not everything I'll say is going to be an original thought. Most of it will be because I'm just that sharp, but uh, (laughs) so many lies. Oh, I I didn't say we weren't going to lie on this podcast. (laughs) I should say that. I'm just kidding. We're not going to lie anymore at this point going forward. So anyways, Jen and I, we were talking, we're like, okay, what is love? And Jen had this great idea. She said, let's reach out to couples that we know. And couples have been married for 20 years, 40 years, 50 years. And those have been married for 10 minutes, (laughs) a year, just a myriad of lengths of marriage. And just ask them, what is your definition of love? Almost like a survey. What is your definition? definition of love. And I promise them I wouldn't use their names and I'm not going to, but we received some really good feedback. And I thought we also received some hot garbage, so I'm not going to share that. Everything was good. (laughs) No, everything was, was great. Um, but there was a few that I I would like to share. So I'm going to read a couple that we did receive. Uh, One we received was their definition of love was the greatest conqueror. Another one uh, that we received is, um, I think love is waking up every day and choosing each other all the time over everything, no matter what the circumstances, making the conscious choice to love each other. I love that one. I love that one. (laughs) Uh, Another one that we received that just stood out to me is love is a strong emotional bond that places someone else before you. It's also a selfless choice made daily to care for and protect the people important to you. Another one that was shared was compassion, commitment, and trust in every season. I love that one. In every season, life's going to happen. There's going to be the, the honeymoon stage, and then there's going to be the stages where, you know, you try to think of where you can bury their body. Just kidding. <laughs> you should not have those stages. If you do, you need to see. You need to see a professional. You need to see a professional. Quit listening right now. Just go see a professional. <laughs> turn off the podcast. Go see a professional. Okay. Uh, one last one that I'd like to share is love is giving all to your spouse and always growing together through the good and the difficult times. Jen, was there any that kind of jumped out to you or anything that you'd like to add with regards to that? Um, I think like one thing we we wanted to do going into this is just see if there was like a common theme that everyone that we surveyed had in their responses. And, and the common theme I saw throughout all the responses was um, commitment, enduring love. Um, I think that's so critical. It's waking up every single day and committing to your vows all over again. It's saying, I do every day to sickness, health, wealth, not wealth, all those things. I'm it's, big on the not wealth. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's saying that and, and keeping to your vows every single day. I think that's super important. And I love that that theme kind of ran through all these responses. It really did. And and that was really awesome to see. We have some really cool friends and family and people that we're uh, uh, connected to. So thank you to everybody out there that 
helped us out uh, that answered our little survey. So what is love? Love is, is kind of a paradox. It's a mixture of opposites, right? Let me explain that a little bit. So uh, love includes affection and anger, excitement and boredom, stability and change, restrictions and freedom. Love's ultimate paradox is two separate people coming together as one, yet remaining two. What a, what a paradox. And over the years, uh, people have tried to explain love in poems and songs. And I'm just going to say every single time I think of love, that song, you know, what's love got to do with it, got to do with it. I don't even know who sings it. I, I want to say... Diana Ross. That's it. We're getting hit with copyright on the first. Yes, episode. I do not own the rights to that song. Please don't sue me. Uh, I don't know why, but that that song. You didn't know that you're gonna get singing in this podcast. You are. You're gonna get some comedy, some singing. It's multifaceted. I'm just kidding. I promise I won't sing again. Please don't stop listening. We need you. We are totally expecting to reach tens and tens of people with this podcast. <laughs> So, but, uh, but over the years, people like in the scientific area, they didn't want to like touch love. They didn't want to get there because it, they, everyone's like, oh, it's ooey gooey. It's, it's feelings and all this. But, uh, there's a professor at the university of Yale, uh, Robert Sternberg. He's a psychologist and he pioneered or developed a scientific model of love and we're going to talk about that for a little bit because when I read it and started looking into it, I thought, man, this is really good. And it, it puts it into, I don't know, practical terms, practical verbiage uh, that we could talk about and really kind of get some tools um, to really find out what love is and to, to really make sure that our love grows in our relationship. So if you will, uh, he, Robert Sternberg, he developed what was called the triangle model of love, triangular model of love. Jen, just shook her head. No, not triangle, triangular (laughs) model of love. Uh, so if you've seen a triangle, you know, in kindergarten, the best four years of your life, triangle has three sides. So with the triangle of love or the triangular model of love, we have passion, intimacy, and commitment. So we're going to start with passion. Passion is, I'm give it a really like scientific term here, the hubba hubba <laughs> of love. Just kidding. Uh, passion is the biological side of the triangle. It's that, that spine tingly sensation that moves us towards romance. It's that first time I seen Jen walk into our church in El Cajon and she was wearing a leather skirt and I was like, holy moly, come on, Jesus. (laughs) She hates when I say that and I will say it to the day I die. (laughs) passion though passion i was like i I need to get to know her much more better and so the passion it it starts with our hormones passion is a sensation uh, characterized by uh psychological or physiological arousal and, and and an intense desire uh physical affection physical attraction but we can't just have passion Uh, There's going to come times in your relationship, in your marriage, where passion will wane. The honeymoon stage will will end. Uh, That is a term that's used amongst marriage counselors and and um, people in the in that field, marriage and family. They talk about that honeymoon stage, and and in that honeymoon stage passion is extremely high. You should always have passion in your marriage, and we'll talk about that, but it can't only be passion. Jen, you want to you want to add anything there? What comes to mind when we're talking about at least this side of the triangle? Um, I, I think it's just really important to remember that um, 
while our relationships always usually start with passion, it's important that we have uh, other factors and we'll go into those later on in the podcast. But uh, passion doesn't have, even though it wanes, it doesn't have to stay in that waning area. If yes. that makes sense. And so, should never go away. Yes. You have yes. to always have passion. I'm not saying so, yes. get rid of the passion. Yes. No, that's, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> but, uh, in life, you know, we go through ups and downs. We have feelings. We don't have feelings. Passion, like we stated before, it's the biological. It's the, the feeling of, of intense love and intense emotion for someone. And, and you're not going to wake up every day feeling that. That's just the the facts of of life and being in, in relationships. You're not going to wake up feeling like I want to kiss their face off every single day. Some days you don't want to kiss them. <laughs> Especially with that funky morning breath. Back up. I have zero funky morning breath, but she does. we'll go there. <laughs> but yeah, so I think it's really important that I think – in our society, people can get so caught up in the passion phase and they feel when that wanes or when that starts to um, kind of decline, oh, I'm not in love anymore. And as we go through this, we'll understand more about what truly love is. Love is not one thing. It's a combination of things that makes love enduring, that makes love that will last. So good. So good. And and passion, pure passion is self-seeking until it's linked with intimacy. And so that's the second side of the triangle that I'd like to talk about for a few moments here. Intimacy. Intimacy is the emotional side of the love triangle. Intimacy has that uh, best friend or, or soulmate quality about it. Intimacy is so vital. I, I know some of you guys, when I said intimacy, you were thinking, oh yeah, this is the love making portion. No, no. <laughs> what we're talking about with this intimacy is the emotional side, the getting to know your spouse, getting to know that person. Everybody wants to know and be known. And in a marriage, in a the the type of marriage that God wants you to have, it should be full of intimacy. It should be full of that getting to really know your spouse, really getting to know them, getting to that that part where there's nothing to be hidden. There's nothing to be held back. There's the communication, the talking, the sharing. I read um, a quote, and I don't remember who who said it. It's not original to me, but I was talking about communication. It said the uh, the fallacy with communication is that it's happened. <laughs> so a lot of times people are talking and they think they're communicating, but the person they're talking to is not understanding or receiving anything that is being said, and and for true love to 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 be had and to be ha- have a longevity in your marriage you need to have that intimacy that getting to know each other that not holding anything back that's true intimacy i think is in its purest form vulnerability and i think that's so hard sometimes for some people because we we have walls we we want to be looked at a certain way we want our spouse to see us a certain way we don't want to to ruin that uh perfect picture that they had when they uh passionately fell in love with us but if you can't be vulnerable with your spouse if you can't open up to them and share with them everything that you are and everything that makes you who you are it is impossible to have true intimacy in your relationship. Um, you you can't, it, you know, you see these people who they they go to work and talk about their their problems, or they'll they'll go to uh, friends and talk about their problems, but they don't want to talk to their spouse about their problems, and it's always an issue. 
if you can't talk to your spouse, if you can't be open and honest with your spouse, if you can't be vulnerable, then intimacy cannot be had in your relationship. That is so true. And and I'm going to speak to the men right now. You have to be vulnerable with your spouse. You have to share. You have to talk. You have to communicate. You have to communicate. I'm going to say a third time. You have to <laughs> communicate. Um, I was listening to another podcast today, and I've heard this many times, but I, they say on average, you know, average men, you know, use 7,000 words a day. And I believe the number for women was like 20,000. And so they're saying, you know, men, women talk more than men. And I, I know I say more than 7,000 words a day. I make a living with my words and I use a lot of words. I use more words than Jen. Uh, that is true. <laughs> there's eight people in this house and I may use more words than anybody in this house. And that is saying something. Except maybe Harper. <laughs> well, yeah, Harper. Yes. Okay. Harper does use probably 200,000 words a day. So, <laughs> but back to you, men. Use your words, real words, not these random thoughts of, hey, did you see who got traded to? No, no. Talk with your spouse. Share with her. Let her know, really, when she's asking you, about something really let her in and be vulnerable we don't want to be vulnerable men so often we we think it shows weakness if we're vulnerable that's not true and if you want your marriage to be everything that god wants it to be which is the greatest thing on the face of this earth you have to have vulnerability and you have to have the intimacy of getting to know your spouse, getting to know each other. Just think back to if you're older, (laughs) like us, um, in our 40s, when we were kids, we had these things called phones in your house. They they didn't go anywhere. They they like stayed in the house. There was wires and they, you couldn't take them anywhere. My kids have never seen one before. But you just think back to you when you started maybe even dating your spouse. And you would get on that phone and you would talk most of the time about nothing. And then somebody would hop on and be like, I'm on the phone. <laughs> and if you had a sibling, they would pretend to hang up so they could try to listen in on your conversation. And <laughs> yeah. uh, and, good times. <laughs> yes, good times. And then you hear the beep, beep, call waiting, like somebody else is trying to beep. But you spent hours on that phone. You would, some of you would fall asleep on that phone. Just You'd run out of words and you would just fall asleep listening to each other. That was the intimacy. That was the the getting to know each other. Unfortunately, sometimes people, when they get married, they think, all right, we're married now. We made it. I don't have to do that anymore. I don't have to work on that anymore. And you're dead wrong. You're absolutely dead wrong. Because if you want your marriage to be like I said, what God wants to be the greatest thing on earth, and you want true love in your marriage, you have to have the intimacy. You need to have the passion. You absolutely have to have passion, but you definitely need to have intimacy. The fulfillment of the fulfillment, I'm sorry, the fulfillment of love hinges on closeness, sharing, communication, honesty, and support. As one heart given in exchange for another, marriage provides the deepest and most radical expression of intimacy. We've got to have it. And the third and final side of the the love triangle is commitment. Yes, I said commitment. I know in today's day, uh, commitment can be like a curse word. Uh, But commitment, commitment is the cognitive and willful side of the love triangle. Commitment looks toward a future that cannot be seen and promises to be there until death. Jen, what do you have to say about 
commitment. And if you hear snoring in the background, I'm going to tell you right now, that's one of our dogs. We have Frenchies. <laughs> they are the loudest <laughs> dogs ever. If you want one, message me. You can have it. Yeah, the snoring's not me. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, commitment, I, I think sometimes people can can think this is like maybe the most important one and it is vitally important but i don't think any of these are more important than one or the other they all have to be working uh, in with each other but commitment is the one that will keep you through everything when the passion wanes when uh, life happens and you don't have the words to even talk to your spouse to even know what to say uh, commitment is the one thing that's going to keep you going. All these things are tied together and it's so important that uh, we try to make sure that we are, what's the word I'm looking for? That we are, I, I guess it's there. The It's the cognitive part of it. It's something that we actually have to wake up every day and set out to be committed it's not something that's that some people come to naturally um it's so easy nowadays we're not committed to anything right we're not committed to uh, our jobs we're not committed to our gyms we're not committed to some people aren't committed to anything their kids i mean everything seems like it's a a, a like a temporary thing you know and once it doesn't make us feel good we can just get rid of it but Commitment is in a marriage is not something you can just get rid of when you don't feel it, when you're not feeling the passion, when you're not feeling close to your spouse. Commitment keeps you through everything, no matter what happens in your marriage. When you were talking about that uh, commitment uh, and people, they're not committed to, to most anything nowadays. I thought of apps now or... <laughs> subscriptions that you can get. Uh, I have this new app. Um, it's called, uh, no, I can't even think of it. I think it's called structured. Uh, I time block my day because I, I have a lot going on. Um, and when I purchased it, it was said cancel at any time. And now whenever you purchase a subscription or, or anything like that, there's always that cancel at any time. It used to be you got a gym membership, you had to like write a letter and go in <laughs> and my word, it was, you might as well just change your bank because you're going to, it's going to be easier than canceling your gym membership. Um, nowadays though, you can, you can do a seven day free trial and, and cancel and then just keep doing that. But in marriage and having a fulfilled marriage, commitment is key commitment is I love you because you are you, not because of what you do or, or how I feel. Uh, passion, intimacy, and commitment are the hot, warm, and cold ingredients in the love recipe. Commitment keeps you going, keeps you there, keeps uh, Jen talked about. She said there's, there's going to be seasons, there's turbulent times in life. I mentioned early on in, in the podcast that two of our, our children uh, clinically were dead. We've, we've spent a lot of time in children's hospital. <laughs> we had like a timeshare there. Uh, we spent months at children's hospital um, with children connected to ventilators. I mean, just wild and crazy things. And during that time, the passion wanes right you there it just does the intimacy the communication still needs to happen there but commitment keeps you going and when you can't put into words sometimes what you're facing what you're going through commitment is key and don't ever forget that make sure you always work on that never get to that point where you could even think of you know what do I really need to be with this other person? Don't even allow that to cross your mind. Commitment is key, and you have to have that. 
I'm going to have, I'm, I'm not going to call it homework because I, you're not going to go home and do this. But if you could with me right now, let's visualize a triangle. All right. Got a triangle, three sides. Think of a huge triangle, just a massive triangle. And you have passion, intimacy, and commitment on it. The larger the triangle, the more love. The smaller the triangle, the less love. We need to be working diligently every day on that triangle, on passion, on intimacy, on our commitment to make sure that our marriage is full of love and that our marriage is everything. I've said this multiple times, but it is so true. Everything that God intended it to be the greatest thing here on earth. So let's focus on that. Let's work on that. Let's work it. Let's work on growing that triangle. Let's work on growing our passion, growing our intimacy and our commitment. So like we mentioned earlier, um, faith, that is uh, definitely going to be a part of our podcasts as we go through this journey. So I want to have some scriptural or biblical application to what we're talking about. So Jen, if you could, if you could read uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, this is the new King James version that she's reading. Paul states, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. I love, love, love that scripture setting. I'm actually going to read the message version because I love to read various uh, versions of the scripture. Uh, and the message, it actually starts at verse number three. So 1 Corinthians 13, three through seven, the MSB, MSG version. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others. It isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sin of others, doesn't revel when others grovel, take takes pleasure in flowering of truth, puts up with anything, trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. I think you can see uh, with that scripture setting, we have the three things that we, we spoke about, passion, intimacy, and commitment. I hope you've enjoyed this episode today and and I hope it's helped you to kind of put into words, maybe giving you some tools on to help you with what love is and and how to grow it in your marriage, grow it in your relationships. Um, Now that we know what love is, our our next episode in a couple weeks, what we're going to go into is how love is given, how love is given. Well, that's the time that we have today. Please subscribe, like, comment, share. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, Like I said, we're looking to reach tens and tens of people. (laughs) Hopefully a lot more than that. But please, again, subscribe, like, comment, share. And as Jen said earlier, we'd love to hear from you. If you'd like to send us a Uh, questions or topics that you would like us to discuss. We'll never share your information. We'll never say who this came from. Uh, You can call or text the show at 747-322-1089. That's 747-322-1089. 
322-1089. Or you can email us at loveworkspodcast at gmail.com. Well, I'd like to close in prayer real quick. So if you would, let's go before the Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to just have this time together to talk and to to share what love is. Lord, I pray that you help us, Lord, work each and every day on our passion and the intimacy and our commitment in our marriage, in our relationships, because we know the scripture tells us that God is love. And we want to make sure that we are loving to the fullest of our capabilities. Lord, we thank you again for this opportunity to share. Lord, I pray that this has blessed someone. Lord, keep your hand upon each and every person that listened to this and whenever and wherever they listen to it. Lord, we thank you. We praise you in the name that is above every name. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody, as always, remember, love works. So let's get to work. (laughs) 